All right, let's get in. Uh, Sunil Subramaniam, CEO of Sundar Mutual Fund, uh, onto this conversation. Uh, Sunil, thank you so much for joining us on Bloomberg. Quinn. My first question to you is, uh, what would, what should investors do right now? You know, uh, at a time like this, we've seen a whole of last year, uh, the money, the market is being supported by domestic liquidity, particularly the SIP money. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are certainly looking at their portfolios and seeing this fall, getting a little worried. What would you tell them? So the first thing is that I think <clears throat> this is where the whole validation of the decision to invest through SIPs is happening. For example, I will tell you that 50% uh, of monthly SIP flows come in on the 1st of the month and the 7th of the month. So if you look at people's SIPs, uh, they would have triggered in on 1st which is post budget and on 7th which is like uh, day after tomorrow. So a huge amount of money is going to get allocated when these stocks have corrected. So I think this is going to revalidate the whole logic of a SIP based uh, movement uh, into the stock market and I think that's good. So those people who came in through SIP obviously are going to benefit. The second thing I would say at this point of time is that this correction is essentially a removal of froth right it's a removal of froth it's also uh, the removal of momentum why i'm saying this is that so the key advice i'd like to give investors here is stay away from buying individual stocks because the temptation for an individual investor is to buy something cheap and try to average it if you had bought a stock at 50 and today it's quoting at 30 he thinks he can average but he must remember that the market is always sensible in that it corrects something which went up too fast by bringing it down too fast. So the right position for people to take is to actually put more money into mutual funds today and shift their stock portfolio into mutual funds. And let me explain why I'm saying this. Because most mutual funds, right, are investing in stocks with a three to five year outlook. So what is the philosophy they use? They use a philosophy called GARP, which is growth at a reasonable price. So what I'm saying here is that mutual funds are buying EPS growth of companies for the next three to five years based on how they're going to perform within an economic scenario of GDP growth and sectoral growth. And they are looking for the right price to buy those stocks which they have already identified. So you wouldn't find a mutual fund manager going and buying something just because it's corrected most. He's going to buy that stock which has always been on his target list which maybe he had been buying less of because valuations had taken the price too high and now that they've corrected he's going to stock up on more. So the best way for individual investors to participate from this whole correction is to actually put more money into their mutual funds because they will empower their fund managers to buy those stocks and that brings me to the third point why am i saying they should buy more now because this sell-off while it's a global equity sell-off while it's a, a risk on to risk off kind of a situation please remember at the underlying what's causing this what's causing this is a rise in inflation in the u.s and rise in interest rates but what was behind the rise in inflation and interest rates is the recovery of the u.s economy mm. the fall in unemployment so what i'm saying is the good news is that the U.S. economy is growing faster than anticipated mm. and because of which a resource rich country like India, which has uh, more number of people, more number of youth, is going to definitely economically benefit from this recovery in world economy and the U.S. economy. So ultimately, if I am buying a stock based on a certain earnings growth pattern, this movement of the U.S. economy to a stronger wicket is actually going to improve the earnings prospects of the companies I am buying. Right. So this is a brilliant time to actually actually buy stocks which you have already studied and I have figured are going to benefit from increased growth. But that's not the job of a retail investor to do. Leave that to the hands of the experts and mutual funds and actually put more money into mutual funds at this point in time. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, you know, more macro, of course, you know, yes, uh, completely agree that this is a, a turn in environment coming on the back of strengthening U.S. economy. So those companies which may be exporting to the U.S., etc., obviously, you know, benefit from the increased demand. Uh, but if U.S. interest rates start to rise, the direction of capital flows may move back towards the U.S. Uh, and that is something that we need to be mindful of, uh, don't we? Even though I know that we are well supported by domestic money and, you know, perhaps they can cushion the fall. Uh, but if the capital flow were to flow back to the U.S. because of higher rates there, uh, perhaps Perhaps that is something that we need to be mindful of. 
Yeah, absolutely. What you say is right. That see, uh, capital flows are a function of three things, right? There's hedge fund flows, which relies on borrowed money, leverage that, and put it into emerging market stocks, stock markets, and that naturally will get impacted as their cost of borrowing goes up. So hot money will tend to move very fast in and out. But there's longer term money. There are pension funds putting money. There are ETFs putting money. All of them are putting money with a three to five year perspective, and they're not borrowing money to put it. So I would say that a proportion. A portion of capital flows will get impacted but not necessarily the whole capital flows and the second point that which is trading see, the capital flows are largely in the top 150 stocks in the market but this correction has taken place right across the bse 500 or the 500 stocks so the point i'm trying to stress is that there's still value on stocks which are correlated to the indian economic growth which are correcting because of this sentiment and which you can actually go and buy so Yes, I do recognize, but global capital outflows are largely going to be in the top end of the market. And that's where you're going to actually see a lot of impact. Sunil, I see a banner of Sundaram Select Midcap on, on where you're sitting. And the midcaps in particular have been particularly battered uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, for somebody who's looking at the midcap space, if he's either invested or wanting to invest, what should he be doing? I'm told you, he should go and buy uh, good quality mid-cap funds which have a long-term track record. When I say long-term, please look at least a 10-year track record. Why am I saying that? Because you have to have mid-cap funds which have gone through the, you know, participated in the upside growth of a boom as well as managed the downside risk. So you take, uh, you mentioned our mid-cap fund. And I'll give, give you an interesting statistic, right? Because in this whole volatile environment, they're saying, should I pull money out of mid-cap? But I'll just give you a small statistic. If you take the rolling returns basis of a mid-cap fund, mid-cap fund since inception right from 2002 to now and if you had stayed invested for five years regardless of whether you came in in 2003 and exited in 2008 when the market was low to high or you came in in 2008 and exited at the bottom at uh, around 2013 you never lost money in the mid-cap fund 100% of your time, if you had stayed invested for five years, your capital was protected. How is the fund manager able to do that? It's because of the long-term approach, right? Whereas when you entered in 2003 and exited, you made 75% annualized returns. So the point is that if you are going to put money in, today is not the time to buy individual mid-cap stocks. Let me say that because a retail investor will not know which mid-cap is got a long-term earnings potential, which has gone up because of momentum. Mm. Where is that? Hawa, as they call it. But okay. mid-cap fund managers, because of the research, for example, as right. a fund house, we study 260 stocks. So when you do research, and, and one more small point, the top 10 stocks of our mid-cap fund, which is true for most of the market also, but I'm just using our fund because I know about it, which, which accounts for about 45% of the portfolio, the average holding period of the stock is four and a half years. Mm. So where I'm coming from is, this is the time to buy quality. And the only way you can get quality is you go to an expert who's picking quality, right. which is a, a mutual fund manager. So I would encourage all, right. all your viewers to actually go and increase allocation right. to mid and small cap mutual funds at this point in time. All right, so thank you so much. Appreciate your perspective here from an investor standpoint and also your view of what's happening uh, in the bigger global market space. Let's uh, bring the conversation back home. Very interesting development uh, that was reported in the newspapers today and Bloomberg Quint